must always have a reply, you must always compete, you must always be trying to play some sort of game. Like, it's not a competition, we're meant to love each other. I can be wrong, and you can be wrong. I can be right, and you can be right. That's what love is about. Our love is meant to be bigger than this platform that we're on. But to you, your mind revolves around where we're at. And that's what's worrying for me. I think it's okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a go ahead, since I've been with you. I want to be You know, it's been over a week since Shex and Bella had their lover's teeth, the usual fight. And so last night, watching both of them having an argument, or should I say, watching Bella being very argumentative towards Shex, it was kind of weird. I didn't even know how to react <laughs> because <laughs> you know where you've completely forgotten those two people's usual banters in the house, guys. I had completely forgotten how it normally goes, you know, the end result, how they would then, at the end of the night, kiss and make up, guys. I had completely forgotten. So, watching both of them, you know, getting all defensive, arguing over shares, you know, getting all nice and sympathetic towards Daniela, it was kind of weird. It was really weird to me. But there were certain things that they mentioned, both of them, and it was it was really hilarious yes i was just looking at both of them like nah these three people they are not serious they're just clowning yes yeah, so we're gonna dissect what they were actually talking about in the course of their argument there was also the confrontation between chi chi and rachel immediately after the supreme video power pitching session yeah chi chi had finally confronted rachel over her snide remarks and over her direct attack on her during that pitching session guys it was quite interesting to listen to and to watch we're going to talk about that as well so please as usual i'll urge you all to please watch this video to the end do not skip one bit and if you're new on here thank you so much for clicking on my video to watch you are especially welcome but please do not leave without doing exactly what you see on your screen if you are yet to subscribe to my channel and talking about welcoming let me officially welcome all of you ogs to my youtube channel you are all specially welcome back my name is gloria elijah as you already know and this is frankly speaking with glory i am the girl with the t um without much further ado let's get into the video it was really weird the way Bella started the drama. Yeah, Bella actually started the drama. It was really weird the way she started. And three things came to my mind as the reasons she started the drama. Because after the head of house challenge, Bella did not really react. After the, yeah, after the pitching session to Chi Chi, Bella did not react. It seemed like all was well and good between herself and Shags. And before we knew it, that drama started. What was she complaining about? She was complaining about Shex being overly nice and friendly to Daniela. Remember, in the arena, Daniela had performed really poorly, which earned her the title of Tale of House. And Daniela had been really sad. Yes. So we didn't really see the part that Shex was actually consoling her in the way Bella had actually been describing. Guys, we didn't really see that part. But the way Bella was complaining about it, one would think that Shex actually kissed Daniela hugged Daniela, romanced Daniela, or possibly even made advances at Daniela, you know? And if there's one thing I must give to Shex, he has never really done any of that to any other female housemate in that house, except for Bella. Yes, both of them, they've been playing their game pretty well. Yes, so there's been no diversion of attention to any other housemate in the house, not from either of them. So when Bella was laying all of those claims, guys, it was kind of weird, to be honest. And I keep using the word weird because it just sprung up out of the blues. Now, as I said, three reasons came to my mind as to why she decided to put up that drama. Number one, I felt like, okay, fine, probably she's transferring aggression, you know, of the embarrassment because it was really embarrassing for Bella to, to stand before Chi Chi sitting on that head of house throne, you know, and pitching herself or rather being instructed to pitch herself, you know, to Chi Chi, to plead, to beg, to be taken to the finals and then not ending up getting picked at the end of the day. We know that Bella is a very proud human. So it must have been really embarrassing and demeaning for her to have done that and not having been picked at the end of the night, right? So I felt like, okay, that was one reason she was just possibly transferring aggression to Shex. Or could it be that she was actually upset and jealous of Daniela, you know, getting picked by her ex-best friend? Guys, that was what I was thinking because 
nobody really expected Chichi to pick Daniela alongside Fina. Everybody knew that Chichi was going to pick Fina, but nobody knew the next person that Chichi was going to pick. So it being Daniela, I was wondering, like, okay, could it be that Bella was getting pissed at that or was she jealous about that you know so that was the second thing i was thinking about and then the third and final and ultimate reason that came to mind was could it be that bella knows that she's up against very very strong contenders this week yes for eviction and so she's probably trying to separate her votes from Sheikh's votes because guys we know how these things goes and hey Bella is no saint to the show these housemates each and every one of them they follow the show back to back so they know how things work especially for those ones in ships they are fully aware that normally when two partners in the ship are up for eviction or nominated for possible eviction what ends up happening is that the votes are splitted between the two partners yes so the votes are splitted and at the end of the day it could go either ways. It, the two of them could be saved, which happened last week, or the two of them could get evicted. So Bella possibly, desperately wants to make it through to the finals and does not want to split votes with Shags and so decided to cause a scene last night. You know, she said a lot of things, it threw a lot of accusations at Shags and I felt like, okay, all of that was just kind of geared towards hinting her fan base that listen, I'm in this race alone, so whatever votes that you guys are going to be garnering for me out there, let it be towards me and me alone and not between Shella as a couple. So guys, I thought about these three possible reasons and I'm thinking, well, they all actually make sense. If we think about it, if we're being honest with ourselves, they all actually made sense. And it's not like they're not going to settle at the end of the night because they actually did. These two people did not sleep until the early hours of this morning. I'm talking about about 4 a.m. or thereabouts. They did not sleep. They were kissing and making up, you know, just settling their dispute. But guys, it was quite interesting listening to Bella threatening Shags with a possible breakup between both of them if he would continue, you know, having his female friends. And these people actually said quite a lot to each other. And guys, I wasn't really surprised because I knew that one day, one day, breeze will blow, phone yash will open. I mean, in other words, I knew that someday soon they were going to get choked up with the way they choke each other up, the way they suffocate each other in that relationship. And then they were going to really vent. And that was exactly what Bella did last night. So as I said before, she was complaining about Shex being overly nice to Daniela and wanted to be friends with Daniela. And it was quite interesting to hear Shex say that actually there's been people he wanted to be friends with in the house but he could not be friends with them because of Bella because he knew how Bella would react and so he had decided not to be friends with those people and so it's as if now this week he wants to use this week to get to know those people now when I heard him say that it sounded really shallow in my frank opinion because I felt like dude you had eight full weeks to know people but you chose to play your strategy, which is absolutely fine. I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong in choosing to play your strategy, but then in the process of playing your strategy, did you ever think about wanting to know these people genuinely, guys? So it was just ridiculous, in my frank opinion, that he's trying to now get to know these people in week nine, you know, and it's getting Bella all round up. And that Bella, on the other hand, was using herself as an example that she herself had wanted to, you know, make friends with people when she dances with guys, especially in the club, in the parties, when she mingles with other male housemates, Shex gets really upset. So why is he doing the same thing now? And that Shex's own line of defense, guys, that one really caught me off guard. I almost gagged. <laughs> I almost gagged on my teeth. Like Shex's line of arguments in return was that he's the sort of guy that his woman is free to go out with her male friends. His woman is free to party with his male friends. Guys, hey God, I almost fainted. I said, Shex, Shex. This is the same guy. <laughs> Guys, I will never forget that particular scenario. I can't remember what, okay, yeah, yeah. They were actually playing a task. I think it was the Flutter Wave task. And Bella was in Giddy Fire's team. And they had won, they had performed well. Bella had actually done well. And Gidefire was so excited, he had lifted this girl, carried her off in a tight hug. Guys, that night, we know here what. 
Like, Shags made a fuss out of it. It was a huge deal. This guy kept on nagging and nagging and nagging and nagging like a jealous boyfriend. I mean, it was crazy. So, when he was saying that, I was like, eh, who is saying this? Is it the same Shags that we've been watching on the show for the past eight weeks? It's coming on here to come and yap his mouth about uh, my girlfriend, this rich girl, uh, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm like, bruh, psh, zip it. Just shut your mouth. Because, guys, we know that there's no way in this life, with the way Shags has been portraying himself, that Shags will allow his woman to be that free with her male friends. I mean, yes, he has said on several occasions that he's always outside, he's always out there in the streets, he has a lot of. Or female friends you know this Kim K banging body type of women yes and he was telling Bella that Bella needs to understand that part of his life that Bella needs to accept him for who he is but we've seen on different occasions Bella even not even dancing shoulder to shoulder hip to hip now but just fraternizing with other housemates male female we see the way Shex gets green with envy we see the way he overreacts we see the way he makes a fuss out of it we see the way he quarrels with her guys Shex is exhausting so when he was saying all those things he was saying guys hey god i said this girl anyways me i shall believe that both of them they are playing the script they're playing the strategy but if i thought they're going to carry this relationship on their head like the 100 million that they came to come and compete for they're going to carry it on their head outside the house then bella definitely needs spiritual guidance and spiritual prayers because this relationship is not going to be a relationship for one person it's going to be a relationship that an entire nation <laughs> needs to join bella in prayers and in my frank opinion Shax is not the only person that's actually that problematic in that relationship i mean bella making a fuss out of sheds you know just showing a bit of sympathy or empathy to daniela how is that such a big deal the fact that she was even talking about itself guys i've given you all my reasons as to why i think she decided to talk about it but it was just petty as hell but on the flip side i also could relate to where she was coming from because i felt like okay fine because of the way this dude had been handling you know had different interactions had different relations with other male housemates even female housemates in the house that could be a possible reason as well as to why she was overreacting because she was definitely overreacting and so guys as i said they had actually kissed and made up they had settled their differences much later although i was also surprised that shags was trying so hard to maintain his calm if it was Shags of two weeks ago before Ibuka asked that bloody question on that particular um, live fiction night, guys, Shags would have changed it for Bella. It would have become a marital issue. It would have become a talk of war. They would have quarreled so hard. Shags would have told her, you lack emotional intelligence. You're a fool, you know. You're stupid, you know. Babe, how can you be so dumb? Babe, how is this such a um, irrelevant conversation? Babe, you're so stupid. Omo, we know the deal. Shags would have put her inside washing machine you know his mouth is washing machine we would have carried bella put her inside his mouth you know put the spinning bottle on he would have spinned bella on like dry <laughs> after that we now remove that like this room and then put her on the line and dry her properly guys <laughs> anyways let me just leave it at that now moving on to chi chi and rachel's confrontation <laughs> I had mentioned on my previous video about how Rachel had provoked Chi Chi, you know, during the Supreme Veto Power pitching session. Now, instead of this yeah yeah girl, this silly girl, to you know to, to come through with her own pitch, she had instead, you know, thrown shades at Chi Chi, telling her things like, oh, you need to learn to own up to your shit, blah, blah, blah. And I love the fact that Chi Chi had actually fired her back. Now, what i could not really blame rachel for doing whatever she did because we all know that she's a rider in other words she's biggest agent rider and a fake housemate and um of course she already has a slot in the finals she and cheesy they were going to stay through to the finals yeah. and so there was no need whatsoever for her to give any heartfelt speech there was no need for her to try to suck up the chi chi there was no need for her to try to appeal try to beg or anything now nah. so in my frank opinion i felt like that was the best thing for her to do at that point in time you know provoke Ray, um, chi chi to the to the to the max so that she will be so disgusted enough to not even consider picking her at all yes and it completely worked yeah so in my frank opinion she really played her rider role to the max 
100% at that point in time. However, Chi Chi being in the dark of all of this behind the scenes happening, you know, with Big Brother and knowing what us, the viewers, knew was really, really pissed. And she had every right to be pissed as well because Rachel, whom at the moment I'm not even sure anymore, is playing her rider script still, but probably mixing it up with her own personal pettiness, guys. Rachel has been spreading a lot of negative narratives about Chi Chi all over the house. I mean, she had been telling anybody who cared to listen that Chi Chi was a pathetic liar and Chi Chi had had it up to here last night so immediately after the pitching session Chi Chi had confronted her and had given her the warning like a final warning that listen don't even come at me that way anymore cut it I own up to my shit I do whatever I do and then I own up to it I take responsibility for my actions you know like Chi Chi really warned her about it and guys, oh my god, Rachel is really annoying. <laughs> She's really annoying because Rachel was literally making a mockery of Chi-Chi, making a jest of her. Like guys, I, I really felt bad for Chi-Chi, but really, I don't even know, as I said. I can't really tell anymore if Rachel is actually playing the script of a writer or if she's just being, you know, deliberately petty and, and annoying. Yeah, and really annoying. And guys, I just felt like, okay, at this point in the game, it's okay. You've played your role to the max. It is okay. You don't do. We've we've seen the best of what you can give. It's okay. We've got some people that are getting through to the finals. So there's no way you can actually piss this girl off any more than you have been pissing her off in the past one week. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, that's my frank opinion. I just felt like Rachel was just being unnecessarily annoying. So please just go ahead. Let me know your thoughts about all of this drama raised on this video. Yeah, in the comment section below. And I'll see you all on another video soon. Have an amazing day. Bye.